Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again here from here at KCIW in Curry Cafe. As uh, Rick just told you, we talk about various subjects here in a very, very informal manner. And today, I think we may really stretch that informal part, but we have a very interesting guest today. We're going to be talking about past lives. I'm sure all of us have at one time or another had a déjà vu experience, or for some reason or other thought that, hey, maybe I was there. Anyway, but we're going to find out exactly everything about it. Exactly, that's not right. Anyway, so let's go around the table, and everybody can introduce themselves. Okay, I'll start. We're pointing, so... (laughs) Ray usually calls us experts, not an expert. I, I said uh, around the table, but, you know, he has a lot of trouble with the English language. He, can, he wanted to go across the table. That's okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm Rick McNamara, volunteer. Or, or maybe he just likes to be in charge. And uh, happy to be here to talk about ca- past lives. And how about introducing our guest first, who really well, is an expert. Do you want to introduce yourself here? With- sure. I am Kim White. I'm owner of Coastal Hypnosis and Holistics. And I'm so happy to be here and talk about one of my favorite specialties of past lives and past life regressions. And I am Jacques, and I am a guest here today at the Curry Cafe with Ray Gary, who hasn't introduced himself, but that's okay. Hmm. Look, I did. I, I introduced it, didn't I? No. You no, I thought I did. No, it's any. okay. All right, Cam, looking forward to it, Rick. Well, thank you for introducing you. me. You're welcome, sir. Now, some of you may have recognized Jacques's name and voice. Uh, if you happen to tune in once in a while, and you, you'll realize that he has a, a sh- another show on, on this station. And the reason he's here today is uh, well, the boys up in the front office thought that Jacques could use a little uh, kind of uh, additional training. So he's, <laughs> they, they asked if I could allow him to sit in today for a little re- remedial training and so if you know, I bow be, before be, you. Be, you know, if 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 you're going to send in a text, don't you know, <laughs> just, just be kind. He's he's a little <laughs> little nervous today. We he all feels bow. like his job is on the line. Oh, wait a minute, we bow before Ray Gary, who is the voice of KCIW. <laughs> yes, said that many many times. Yes. Honestly, you For are many 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 years. Huh? Yes, and that yeah. is true. And you have so many diverse things that you do. And thank you for your time and input to KCIW. You are part of the community, man. Man, yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I walk in restaurants and people applaud when they see me. Wow, cool, cool. I thought joke time was not in this. We got a, we got an outside. You know, that, that actually did happen one day. The Victoria and I, you know, they come in kind of that aisle when you go into the. Uh... Okay, Joe Biden. No, no, no. Oh. When you when you, <laughs> when you go into the. Open mic thing. I can't yeah. do it. Open mic. Yeah. Anyway, and and you and you're kind of walking past, and the audience is sitting over on the left, and just as we kind of got in view, they broke out in applause. Wow. Oh, I thought it was for me. It Turns was for out Victoria. there was there was somebody on stage, oh. some clown is getting <laughs> applause. But anyway, good. Okay, so who? I guess you want to start today. Well, I would Kim. hope to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let Kim go. How about telling us a little bit about your your business here in town? Oh, okay. Um, my business uh, involves energy work. Some want to call it Reiki, um, but it's much bigger than that. Hypnosis, sound, healing. And uh, the business is located right behind Rice Bowl at the moment. And it's 99% of it uh, is remote. I do take in person, but yeah, 99% of it now is remote, and which means I can and do have people around the world that I can help. So that makes it really nice. I specialize in past life regressions and spirit attachments. Not that I don't have clients for weight loss, stop smoking and other natures of that, but past life regressions is the biggest here, at least in this area that people wanna know, why are they here? Do you think that's unique to this area? There's so many people or is that everywhere? I feel like it's everywhere. People are more now evolving to wanting to know their purpose. And, you know, there's shifts changing within, you know, our planet. And there's that need of wanting to know, why am I here? What's my purpose? What have I done before? But on the other side of that coin, we find this out more in hypnosis, that we want to find out what imprint 
why we do the things we do. And a lot of the times it's stuff that's embedded in our energy field and our physical bodies from past lives. And if we can heal that part, it really changes the timeline to the, the present day and the future. And so it's it's big. I, I think it's worldwide. That. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things looking back. I say, what did I do that for? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that's what you're talking about. Is Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> have, Never you, know. <laughs> have you been doing this long, Kim? I haven't been doing past lives, well, a year past lives for a year, but I've been doing energy work for a few years now, and I've dealt with uh, clients on a different level prior to that. Um, I was mainstream medical in the medical field uh, working there, and it, something happened in 2021 that really just kind of changed and shifted the uh, trajectory of what I wanted to do. And so I'm, I'm glad because now I reach people on a much deeper level, um, you know, with the soul, and I'm happy to be where I'm at with all the experience that brought me to this point. Yeah, you you're definitely reaching a different level than uh, AMA would. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's all it all it was all part of my journey, so it all was pieces of my puzzle. So, uh, I w I've been interested in this for a long time. When I can remember when I was a kid, I would have these déjà vu experiences, and then I heard about people, uh, you know, saying they were at Pearl Harbor and things you know, on, on the late night radio stations that they had then, and uh, I thought, wow, I wonder if that if I could comply there, and I. I used to visit my friends in, in Fort Dix that got drafted before I did, and I just had this incredible feeling walking around those World War II barracks like, yeah, I've been here. This is this is not new to me. And I also have had a a, a real um, attraction to um, like Glenn Miller and the World War II music, which is kind of odd when you get to my favorite band is Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> things like that. But uh, Moonlight Serenade does a thing for me. That's definitely indicative of, of someone who lived in a past life. If you're drawn to a specific area or like like you just said, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. I know this. Or, you know, someone who is naturally good at a piano and they, they've carried that through their, their lifetimes. And so those are true indications that you have been here before and this is what you've done. Um, that's embedded in your energy field. We do carry it forward. So Do you, do you think that might be an explanation for savants? Yes. Three-year-olds that sit down and play most. most yes, songs. you know savants, guru, gurus, um, some of your sind masters. They they knew what their plan was, and they didn't need that veil of forgetfulness that's placed upon our energy at the time of birth. And so, yeah, they totally know. They they're fully aware that veil is gone. Yeah. And yeah, I th I think that's that's probably a uh, pretty good reason to believe that such a thing is is true. How else could this kid know this? From? Right, right. From what. Uh, little research, but some research that I did, and we talked before the show about it, this, uh, I was given the book Many Lives and Many Masters by, I'm sorry, Brian Weiss. Weiss. Mm -hmm. Weiss. Um, anyway, I came across you talking about the savants or a child being able to play a piano. I came across a word I'd never heard of, xenoglossy, where ch children can just speak a foreign language without being, you know, reading or taught. I, I guess that would be a uh, the example of living some past life. It truly is because that veil that's put upon us, um, children, that veil is real thin with children. Uh, but as we get older, uh, you know, it's it's by design, but that veil becomes bigger and bigger and then life, you know, happens. But yes, children, oh yeah, totally. They're more in tune than we are as an adult with their past lives. Do you work with children? I have worked with children, uh, not necessarily the past lives, though you have to be very careful with that. Okay. Uh, my work with children is more on the uh, triggers of anxiety okay. and things like that nature. So, When you speak of children, you just reminded me of some of the friend of mine has a, uh, a grandson who's, I think, pushing three right now. And for a couple of years, or for quite a while anyway, he's been fascinated with garbage, garbage trucks for whatever reason. His toys are garbage trucks, and he likes to watch the... I don't know. Maybe maybe he was a garbage man. Very possible. His life. Yeah. Very possible. Of course, my friend would much prefer that he had been an administrator, not just a garbage man. I guess. <laughs> maybe he'll run the garbage truck industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he designed them. Yeah, there you go. And, there you go. And he's looking looking at that, thinking, "What a piece of crap!" Things I did with that. <laughs> wow. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> Pretty good one. Okay, you, now, now you're I, being, you're I, being, you you're said something earlier. So you be said careful something that. earlier that you said when I was a kid, I used to have deja vu, and I have theory. I theorized this this for the past ten years is that I don't have deja vu anymore. 
Because guess what? I'm over 50. I'm over 60. I'm approaching 70. I think it's phenomenon that is carried with younger people because we haven't experienced the things in life yet that we have at this age. I ask anyone out there, if you're over 50, do you have the deja vu that you used to have? I certainly don't. I'm 71 and I do. You, you still do. I, I, ha, I have I mean, just the slightest thing every now and then. Before I forget, and I did forget, but I'll try to remember now. Uh, if you want to p- participate in this show, you can by text. And the number is 541-661-4098. That's 541-661-4098. Operators are standing by. And they're being well paid, and we don't want to waste that money. So uh, <laughs> just go ahead and get in touch with us. 541 661 4098. You can ask a question or tell a story or do whatever you like. Okay. Wow. I'm stealing that idea. You, you, you on our text? show, the Dr. You, Jacques, I'm going to oh, take that. We've never been told that. Well, that's why you're here for me. That's what we're learning. <laughs> you're learning from the master. <laughs> Seriously, the master. Something went wrong. Please try again. Is that mine? <laughs> I've shut that thing off. Well, it is shut off. Theory completely. is yeah. made an Sounds like something. I, it's life. shut off. Maybe here, right? yeah. See now, now, John, now again. this is <laughs> this is part of the reason. This is the kind of training you should be getting. Now. Turn it is, off it your is. cell phone. I'm yeah. the one that said to everybody, make sure your cell phones are up. It's, I know. Okay, we won't. We won't bring it. So you just think you're in command and you don't have to do right. You you're telling the troops to go over the top, but you're staying in the in, in, in the trenches. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. So <laughs> another aspect, Kim, maybe is. Uh, uh, dreams, do you deal in, talk to people? I have recurring mm-hmm. dreams occasionally, and does that come into the oh, it, past it's, life? It area? certainly does, because, you know, it's called autoregression. Okay. When you dream, it's possible that some of your dreams are remembering what you did before in another life. They are very prevalent in your dreams. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the one I've been having lately is kind of full of angst, if you will, and it's all about where I grew up in the Sacramento area. I'm, I'm lost. I want to get home. Anyway, stuff like that. But it's been happening almost every couple of weeks or three weeks. It's kind of weird. Interesting. And it just started happening, oh, maybe three months ago. Maybe you're, maybe in your subconscious mind is trying to remember something no, that's going to be a lot of trouble future. back there somewhere. But so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We have a question Uh-oh. by text, and uh, the writer says that uh, he always wanted to be a tow truck driver when he was a kid. So I'm going to say, you He's asking if that could mean he was a tow truck driver in a prior life. Very possible. I mean, that's where if you have passions as children and, and it really comes up as children that they, they want to be cowboys or tow truck drivers or firemen, and they've just got this desire and, and the family has no history of it whatsoever. It's possible that that soul incarnated in that similar line of work. It depends on if that soul jumped right back in after they left. or. Yeah, you mentioned um, wanting to be a cowboy. Uh, at some point in my life, I, I, I got horses. I had uh, foster kids and stuff, and it was a good thing for them. And anyway, I had f- as many as five horses, and it was just something about being around the horses and being around barns and all that kind of stuff that just was very, I don't know, soothing to me, which kind of fits into one of the, I'll tell you one of the fa- the, 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 the stories uh, of my past life experiences. I, I attended a, a class about 30 years ago uh, where the instructor would break us up into groups of four or five. Then he would, is mesmerize a better term than hypnotize or whatever? But anyway, he would put us all in a trance, which is not like you think. None of us right. turn into chickens or anything like that. But <laughs> So we'd sit around in groups of, like I said, four or five, and you would just sit sit there. And no, nobody say anything until you had something to say. Then one member of the group might say, uh, "I see a stone fireplace." Then another member of the group would come in with, um, "And I'm laying on a round rug in f- in front of the fireplace." This would be a different. In this case, that was that would be me. And little by little, each member threw in something. Now, it's easy to say that that that's suggestion because you have the stone fireplace and then the rug and all that other stuff. But it didn't feel like that when we were doing it at all. It really did feel like, yes, okay, I'm being put there. And, and that particular one, I actually got up and got to walk around. And um, 
I was I was on a farm and I had the feeling it was during the Dust Bowl and like there was like a road that ran in front of a house or a driveway and across from that there was a barn and I was able to go out and walk around in the barn and everything and, and came back and I thought that's fit into other things in my life before. As I said before, we maybe I didn't say before we started, but I've, I always felt like I was killed in World War II. So if I was a kid, like 10-ish around then, or a little older than that maybe, uh, I could have very easily been in World War II. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And later past life regressions had me in World War II. There you go. It's fascinating, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So on that hypnosis level, uh, now I never was. Uh, my wife uh, had been a couple of times. I wasn't with her. But I've heard not everybody can be hypnotized. That's that's completely false. I'll false. tell you why. Oh, okay. Uh, that was for example, um, you're driving down the road, and this has happened, I'm sure, to all of us, and you're just kind of daydreaming, and you miss your exit. Okay. You're in, in, you're in a very light state of hypnosis. When you start to fall asleep, well, you get that right. in-between stage, sure and you're just about to drift off to sleep. That's called hypnogogic. You're in hypnosis. When okay. you start just to wake up and you're kind of groggy, you're in hypnosis. It's just a, the level of hypnosis that you're okay. trying to be. We have a... So is there... Is, can, um, Kim, is there a... I've always heard uh, and experienced myself, self-hypnosis has been... The, the founding that I have, and then I could trust other people. I agree with everything you said about everybody is susceptible. You can you can be hypnotized. I started with um, self hypnosis after my uh, near death kidney uh, cancer experience, and that was to alleviate the pain. And it worked. It worked phenomenally. And then I started reaching out and, and doing what you're kind of doing and checking into helping other people get over their issues. Simple ones, and it works. It, it does. Hypnosis is a phenomenal thing. It is a real thing. It's, I think, medically accepted now, and on top of everything, there's just so much, uh, so much information is coming out on it. And I think people have stepped away from the stage show hypnosis, uh, which was a big problem, I think. When I was a cop, we had a uh, one of the troopers was was taught to hypnotize, and he would. Uh, interview witnesses, and they were able to remember more details under hypnosis that they, then, um, yeah. Well, they were not under hypnosis, and and then for some reason or other, uh, there was some court problems with it, and we 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 weren't using it anymore. But um, it was just witnesses. I don't know why that was a problem, but anyway. Yeah. So uh, we've all seen either on television or had the experience of being in a club where. Uh, the, the guy is on stage and turns everybody into a chicken and that type of thing. What do you what do you think of those? They're actually very real, believe it or not. Um, it's some people think it's a game, and, and some probably have hoaxes. But some of those hypnotists, they're they're very real hypnotists. Now, can someone cluck like a chicken? Depends on <laughs> you know if they're in a club and they're drinking and they're in that state of suggestibility. Definitely. The last one of those I saw was on a TED talk. And this uh, TED Talk guy was saying, oh, yes, hypnotism is, is real. Mm -hmm. And he brought somebody up from the audience and literally did turn him into a chicken and had him clucking around. And I'm thinking, well, not only was he able to turn this guy into a chicken, but this guy's pretty talented. I mean, he was he was really getting into it. You know, it wasn't like many of us would go on cluck, cluck or something. But he was, uh, but this, this guy said it's absolutely real and all that he's... Uh, uh, nightclub acts, you see, are, are real. Yeah, I don't know how much good that does for hypnosis therapy, though, right? No. I think that's kind of the Jerry Springer-ish. Well, yeah. It's, it but, is. It well, is. I mean, I'm yeah, mm -hmm. just part of it. And you, you probably have to battle that a little bit. I do. People. Um, and that's why when I bring a client in, we have a pre-hypnosis um, interview um, oh, and let good. them know what it is, what it isn't, what to expect. Because that comes up, are you going to make me quack like a duck? Well, <laughs> unless you want to, you know, it is a heightened state of suggestibility. So if you're if you're down for that, okay. Uh, but typically, no. Um, but yes, it does kind of cast a shadow on those who I are trying to, to help people. And, right. you know, it's I think the ones on stage is for entertainment purposes only. But again, at the same time, you know, we are in this business to help people and we're not here to poke fun at them. So, yeah, we do battle it. Okay. Heightened state of... Suggestibility. Yeah, there you okay. go. Mm -hmm. Just real. Do you 
dabble. <laughs> I know you were in the medical field, mm -hmm. but what you do now, medicines or supplements, do you just don't even go there with people? Or, or do you, if they ask you, hey, this is helping me, should I continue? That kind of a thing. I will direct them back to their primary care provider. I feel it's very important, and I'll state this. I'm a holistic health practitioner. I'm you know, board certified at the Drugless American Association of Drugless Practitioners, so I do okay. not dish meds myself. However, when a client does come in, I'm, I do not minimize the fact that we all need our doctors. We okay. all need our doctors, and any uh, medical advice, I'm going to switch them back to the doctors. I can okay. tell them what I do because I, ha I have a program called Voice Bio, which there's supplements that are recommended. But again, it's a recommendation, and please consult your provider first. Okay. All right. So when, when you... Uh uh, bring somebody back, or or bring a, bring out a past life in, the, in mm -hmm. their therapy. Uh, do they always say things like I just said? Like, yeah, I always thought something like that. Very and, common, very common. And is is there any particularly interesting ones you could tell us without, of course, telling us where it came from? Well, there is there. there every session's interesting and unique in its own way. Uh, how, about a, how about a shocking thing when there were. Uh, you bring the person back and you tell them and they go, what? Well, the funny thing with hypnosis is you are aware of the whole thing. They're not um, under anesthesia. Right, they're not. Right. They're going to remember everything. Mm -hmm. um, they're just at a certain level. Of, it's called somnambulism where it's, you know, they're, they're aware and they can tap out at any time. But um, we do record each session and it's to protect them and myself. Um, I do write a summary of what had happened because, you know, there's a lot of information that comes forward. And especially if we start jumping, I had one client um, and we're not done with her yet. We jumped back three lives. And um, yeah, so I wrote the summary for her so that she can remember. And, and oddly enough, after the hypnosis session, you're still in a slight state of hypnosis, but things start to come up even more because now the brain has tapped into that unconscious mind and it's kind of awoken a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, one one of the people in our group was uh, was a, a crew member on a slave ship, which really surprised her because that's not something she would do in her current life. But out there being cruel to slaves. One of the ideas of this book, "Many Lives, Many Masters," that I gleaned was that he, this uh, guy, <laughs> claimed or felt that past life regressions will help people with. Uh, anxiety or nervousness, and I'm kind of unclear how that might work, but the, his client here definitely had many problems, and once he took her back many, many lives, she was, quote, cured. Correct. Is what he said. You know, she didn't have to come in for sessions anymore. Correct. Um, with that, with, with what he's speaking about, if he took this client back and there's no initial sensitizing event in this life here to cause the anxiety, there's something in the past lives. And so what what he's basically saying is if we can find where that was in the in that past life and we send it light and heal it, it, it's, it heals in all different directions of time. So once you heal that in that past life, you've now healed it for your present and your future, and it goes in all different directions, and you totally switch the timeline of okay. of that and a cure, in other words. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Have okay. you yourself been hypnotized? I have. Okay, I would think so, yeah. yeah. I sure have. <laughs> oh, well. I sure have. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. I, I'm sure many of you out there want to ask a question or take part, so... You can text us, 541-661-4098. Kim, do you um, help people in your hypnosis, uh, for instance, uh, like bruxism, grinding to the teeth, or yes. smoking cessation? Smoking cessation, yeah. bruxism. Bruxism usually is typically um, a derivative of anger. And so um, the type of hypnosis I do is five-path hypnosis, and we deal with anger quite a bit, um, walk, walking them through each phase, and yeah, usually stops. And after they've had the sessions with you, do you encourage them to look into it more for self-hypnosis purposes? I a lot do. Of stuff out there. Um, I do. Not only do um, I teach seven-path uh, self-hypnosis, but um, and we use it also in our sessions, uh, I record audios for them. I send them home with certain audios because it's very important that they stay on um, some sort of practice. Um, you know, and that's always self-care. We're always evolving, always trying to just, you know, stay on this specific practice. So we don't go backwards. And so, yes, I do, to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. cool. Good mm -hmm. for you. Thank you. Another one that 
he was taught or, uh, with this client that he had a big fear of death. Mm -hmm. Now, as a younger person, what, well, I think most of us probably do, but what I notice about myself is the older I get, the less fear I have. Right. I look at that as a good thing. <laughs> Don't anxiety, get anxious well, over that. It could work out, though, that by the time you are going to die, you're ready to go because, well, well I've done it yeah, all. I've been there. Whether I am or not, I'm going probably. Yeah. But, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> and not only but, that, I owe Billy 20 bucks, and if I die, I won't oh, pay him. You that's know. it. <laughs> you got a little cheapness in you then for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, 30 No, but, but that's, a big, that's a serious one. I, in my fact, I said most people probably have that. But and then of course I was influenced in my military career by I was happened to be in a barracks with a bunch of born again Christians and they were just on me all the time going to suffer eternal blah 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 that kind of stuff. Right. Well, you know, it took didn't take me too long to realize that that's really not well. I don't believe that anyway. Right. But but I guess fear of death is a big one that people probably come into. Fear of death is you know and the fear in general if it's an irrational. Um, disempowering negative thought process of fears that, again, there's not an initial sensitizing event to start it. And say someone has this irrational fear of death and all their family members are alive, they really haven't suffered much trauma, then we got to go back and, and figure out and where and what life and okay. what causes that. Okay. But typically, I guess, among the masses, younger people, they don't want to die. Well, know? Now, I'm not looking forward to it. But no. <laughs> yeah, it's happy we're well, but Ray, you but, wait a minute, you got that other life coming up now. Well, and there, who knows again, what you'll be? That? That's a that's a new phase. I yeah. I never really quote believed in that too much, mm -hmm. uh, but my mind is open, and that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I just hope it might be. Well, I've had a pretty good life, but so uh, in, in, at least one of the theories I hear about these multiple lives is that you are here to uh, to learn a lesson, and and you progress in each life. You either have learned that lesson and you get to move on, or you don't learn the lesson and you may go back to, to, to do it again. Is that something that, that you subscribe to? That is is partially. It's it's almost like um some in some spiritual cultures they believe that it's a karmic wheel that, you know, we're here and we it's karma and we have to rectify our common karma and others are we're here to learn a lesson. My my belief, I and mean, it's been my experience is talking to people in past lives, so it's a commonality, is that, you know, the soul comes here voluntarily because they want to, they want to be here. And the more we can learn, and that's why that veil of forgetfulness is placed upon us. It's almost like starting out with a clean slate, but it's a pseudo clean slate. So we can have a new experience to evolve the soul because we are multidimensional beings that cross different realms and have many, many lifetimes. And so it's just a, it can be a lesson to learn, but I think it's more of evolution because the universe is evolving and so is our soul at the same time. Amen. Okay, you opened up a, a uh, a new avenue to me there, honey. Anyway, when you said the the uh, the soul comes here because it wants to be here, it could. Yes. All right. So I'm picturing. I, I don't know from uh, I guess from my experience, there's some guys sitting around a table or something, and and one says, uh, "I think I want to go be a cowboy or something." I, uh, I know that's ridiculous sounding, but is that the type of thing? No, that's, that's actually very accurate. The soul plans out right before, and, and I hear, I'm going to get probably some, some people don't really like to hear this, but um, the soul knows exactly and has planned out exactly what it's going to do in its lifetime. Now, do the human body, the avatar, completely follow through with that if they live a long life? Not necessarily, but you know, you know, you're in alignment with the soul because you feel aligned when you do that. Now, on the flip side of that, the downside of this, um, and I've been asked this time and time again, and it's a very tough question. You mean to tell me the soul knew that that child was going to get murdered? The soul actually signed up for that, and you're okay with that theory? Actually, I am, and I'll tell you why. Because the soul already knows it's coming back, and it's it's the soul comes into the the human body for an experience. It's the human experience, good, bad, or indifferent. And so it's a really hard topic to comprehend, but that soul already knows I'm coming back again. The problem I've always had with this grand plan thing, the the idea of, of there being a, a God and all that type of thing is, where where is the fairness in, in this? I mean, some people are born good looking and, and, and intelligent and, and witty and have radio programs, and some people, uh, don't. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Simon said some folks' lives rolled easy and some don't roll at all, and some are born with spina bifida. So, so that would be, to, to me, that would be the the idea of there being a fairness that you're going to 
So I get asked that a lot too, yeah. and it's again, the, it's the human experience um, across the board. They already know. I want to experience this. I'm a soul. I want uh-huh. to jump into the body on Earth. I'm a soul, so I want to experience this because the soul doesn't know until it does. And Kim, do you, I believe we have a text. Yep, we do. Kim will read a text. Uh, what does past life regression work consist of? How is it done? And the cost? Well, past life Good. regression. That's the whole program. <laughs> past life regression typically is done um, uh, with hypnotherapy and based on the hypnotherapist they sit you down uh, you get into a comfortable position uh, you start to get into um, a alpha brainwave state so they start to relax you and you relax to a point of suggestibility to where your subconscious now is opening up and as for cost it varies with different providers Need to take a break now real quick, like, and uh, introduce or identify the station. You're listening to KCIW LP in beautiful Brooklyn, Oregon, and this show is Curry, the Curry, Curry Cafe. Cafe. <laughs> made me forget it from before. And uh, we're right now having a very informal conversation with Kim White, who is a hypnotherapist, and our other members are Jacques and... Rick. Rick. There we go. You don't hey. remember me, right? <laughs> uh, for a minute. For a minute, okay. I was in another life. That's okay. Uh, I got I was. Uh, I was. Uh, I was remembering you as the person I knew. In, oh, okay. Uh, Hope I was a little better back then. Okay. <laughs> well, Ray. Not I think, to me, you weren't. Ray, I think when you come back to your next life, you might be a radio show personality. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> Just maybe. You never know. Some people never learn from experience. You know, Kim, you were talking about the the soul knowing and all, and, and the crazy, ugly stuff that could happen. So, where does the God thing fit into all of this, or does it fit into this? I, I, and I'll I'll refer again to people call the. I've been in a church. Churches before where speaking in tongues took mm-hmm. place. I just didn't buy it. I have a prejudice against some of these religions now from my experiences, but speaking in tongues and. Speaking gobbledygook isn't like some child speaking a Fr- uh, French or something like that. Right. But so mainly, where does God fit into all this, or does God fit into all of this? It depends on what your belief system is. Some people don't believe at all um, in God, and then if they don't, well, then they don't believe in the soul. Typically, because hmm, I, mean, I, I don't believe really in God, but I believe in a soul. I, okay, I do. That's you are maybe first. I, weird. Could somebody I, explain what a soul is? Well, to you, either or both of you, boy, I, <laughs> all I, how would I explain that? Um, I, well, I think of, of my wife passing six years ago, and I really truly feel she's not gone forever. That we'll hopefully meet again. Uh, that just how I feel. Uh-huh. You know? uh, but uh, all that that power and energy just can't just go boom and be blown away. Well, in my opinion. You know, often I think of of, of, of people who think that you're going to go to heaven or hell or something like oh, that, that yeah. it's just human arrogance that we can't believe that we're just going to all of a sudden be gone and that we won't exist anymore. I mean, I guess that is a possibility. I prefer not to think that. Bleakness and darkness for the rest of, I don't know. Well, you won't even and see it because you'll be really dead does. and there'll be no bleakness, there'll be no darkness, there'll be no anything. Kim, I mean, what is that's it? A, that's a very difficult thing to... Sure, it's comprehend. To, to picture, yeah. yeah. Kim, what's your definition of soul? How do you feel about it? what a soul is? Uh, a soul is part of, and I call it the source. I mean, the source, you can call it God, universe. It's 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 that wonderful, beautiful ball of energy and love. And that's we are that. I mean, and I, I can, this would be totally for a different show. I was raised um, in the church. I've read the Bible front to back, multiple Bibles. I also know how it's been edited and taken out to cause separation and fear. Um, and it, I, I can quote, you know, multiple things, but the soul is, uh, let's, let's do this. Jesus, Yahshua ben Joseph, okay? He was crucified because he specifically said, I am God and he is me. And they didn't like that and they killed him for it. What he was saying was he is God. We all are a form of God. I mean, because the source is that energy and where do we channel that from? That's our soul. So now we're all these little beams of energy and light. We're all connected. Interesting. And, and the soul makes it unique to that specific person, but the soul can be 
you know, you can be a dog one day, you can be a man in one day, you can be a woman another day. I mean, it it varies. Today, and that, especially. Today, yeah. especially. <laughs> yeah. And that's where, and this is where the shift is coming from. And I'm probably hitting some pretty controversial stuff, so I'll, I'll keep that's, it light. But well, we love that's controversy. Good. That's you know, yeah. you have someone, for example, um, a man who is um, feminine. He's got a feminine energy about him. Okay. It's very possible in his past life, he was female. Okay. All right. And the same with women. She got a very masculine dominant side. She very possibly could have been male. So, yeah. And that's a good point on that book, too. This, his client, Catherine, he called her, was various men, women. I didn't hear any, didn't have animals. You suggested they, that. Me, animals, too. I've had one where she claimed she was a dog. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I was, uh, it, it, when I took this this uh, program, I think we did about five different sessions. And in one of the sessions, I was um, in a pyramid being uh, painted. The inside was being decorated with the hier- hieroglyphics and stuff. And I was walking around with somebody who was doing the in- inspection. And I was just a bimbo, I guess you could, you could say. I was just kind of on his arm as, as, uh, as eye candy. I was so... Uh, there you go. Anyway, whatever point that is, but yeah, you can be other other mm-hmm. uh, sexes. Chem is the soul equated with the subconscious mind. In my book, it is. It is. Well, the subconscious and the unconscious. Yes. Mm-hmm. And which is more powerful, the brain or the subconscious mind? A lot of people don't know the difference today. I don't know the difference: subconscious the, and unconscious. Well, if you want to go scientific terms, um, the brain is electrical. Okay, and so the brain and the heart is magnetic. Um, subconsciously, the the subconscious mind is so powerful, though. I mean, so the brain is mechanic. The subconscious is is expansive. So I, to answer your question, I think the subconscious is more powerful. And it's the soul. I always yeah. equated the subconscious yeah. with the soul. Correct. But Rick, there's a difference. I mean, we used to be taught this in the school that there is a difference. That there's the two minds. Okay. Subconscious and your brain. Your brain needs a rest every night. It needs Oof. to go down to sleep. That's what Certainly hypnosis does. kind of taps into. Yeah. Okay. But the subconscious mind never sleeps. Never okay. Stops. Mm-hmm. That opens going. that up. Always working with you. And on that soul, we talked a little bit about this before the show, but my wife, who was more in tune to most of the stuff, she always claimed I was a very young soul that needed to come back, learn a few lessons. I don't doubt that at all. But she was a very old soul. Yes. And it's been around many times. And now, but I, I, I guess there's no set amount of time, of course, that people come back. But, and maybe if I was hypnotized, maybe, because this lady in the book didn't have any idea of past lives until she was hypnotized. Right. And then she just became a, a force field of all these past lives. It's pretty amazing. It is. It is. And as for a new soul, it just, you know, it, it varies. Typically for light workers, we jump right back in. Um, some souls, they wait for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, new souls, they just kind of like hanging out up there and they'll jump in once in a while and, you know. Kind of sound like what I do. <laughs> what are you? Have you had, what was your past lives yourself? Past life, one of them was an Egyptian queen. Wow. Another one was a 13-year-old girl and that one was an auto regression. I was um, standing there and, and I just, boom, remembered that. And that was actually last year. It blew my mind on this English ship. I was traveling across the ocean. I can feel the mist in my face, and it was super foggy. Um, Another one, what were we brought up with that? Oh, I was um, a a farmer, a male farmer, and that explains it because I love the farm. I grew up on a farm, and, um, you know, that's just how it was. And I think we went back about three. I try to do some autoregression on myself to see where we're at, and I get different pictures, but I I haven't quite put the pieces of the puzzle. But I get images. And so it's just a matter of piecing those images together if they're separate or if they're together. But those are vivid. Vivid. You're talking about very, very vivid, vivid mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. or past life. Re- yeah, it was funny because when I had a past life regression done on me about the Egyptian queen, I always say I'm the queen. I'm the queen. And it, I, I told Good her that. Place I said, to be. I said, that's so funny. I always say I'm the queen. <laughs> you know, tire high. I'm, that's right. I'm the queen. Mm. And then, then she brought that up. And that, well, I guess that's the reason why. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, I kind of uh, lost it, or maybe I misunderstood it. So maybe some of our w- w- our listeners did as well. You said when the soul comes back, the soul is going into a life, and and the soul knows what that life is going to consist of. Correct. From birth to death. Yes. The soul. So even... somebody 
chooses to come back as uh, Jeffrey Dahmer or uh, bank robber or, or Republican candidate for office <laughs> or some. <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> yeah, yes, they do. <laughs> uh, yes, they do. In fact, the soul will hover over um, and pick their parents as well. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, now that I've known the movie. We have a text again, and oh, Kim, another text. We got lots of texts. This is a new idea, G. Got a lot of listeners out there. Okay, being in a, I'm sorry, this is a text that has come in from a listener and one of our operators who is standing by at great expense to us has given me the text. Now, being an identical twin, I wonder, are we totally different souls, have different past lives? Oh. Uh, No, we're the same soul. We're just living a different human experience. So two twins are going to be the same soul. Same soul, different. But just two different experiences. So, right. so it's a shared soul. No, because twins, because they're two separate bodies, they have separate experiences. So those twins, though, the, thing, the interesting thing about a twin, though, they have a soul contract with each other. They are always intertwined forever, and a lot of us are. But no, the souls, there's two souls, incarnate into the physical avatar. So there's two avatars with that. So there's going to be two souls. The Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. Before I forget, uh, uh, Kim, would you like to give us some information about how somebody could get a hold of you? Uh, oh, um, yeah. My um, website is www.coastalhypnosisandholistics.com. My phone number is 541-469-0262. And my email address is info at coastalhypnosisandholistics.com. Okay. And we do expect a piece of the action from anything you might get from this. <laughs> I give the props, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're doing a good thing. I was heard, I was told by a San Franciscan Buddhist many, many years ago, he says, you bad humans, you come back as a dog. And a bad dog comes back as a fly. And I thought, wow, that's pretty. I personally believe we're all given the choice of death whether they come back again. I think yeah. that's my personal voice. Uh we are said, do you want to go back and relearn things? So if you were a child that passed away or a father fell in or some real problem, yeah, you want to go back. Yeah. But we're all given that choice. And the soul being what it is, which I think you and I are on the same page there about being the subconscious mind, the more expansive mind, the more powerful, even more powerful than the amazing brain. So, I, yeah, I'm on the same page with you. I, I think that's, there's a lot to be said about that. And I had a one-time experience uh, with my daughter when I was new to hypnosis when I was getting over my kidney cancer thing, and I brought her into a past life experience. Big mistake, because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, she, I brought her back, and she said, Daddy, I taste blood in my mouth. And I thought, break it off right now. Break yeah. off this hypnosis, because she was back in the womb. Yeah. Mm. And it was too far back. So uh, there is a danger there. There's uh, mm-hmm. people don't realize this huge power of the subconscious mind, and then the hypnosis means I'm bringing it up. I agree. I agree totally. And that's one of the things that um, I had a client who uh, wanted to remember more of some interesting and controversial trauma, and I advised her. I said, "Are you sure? Because once we start, and you know, it, with seasoned hypnotists, we need we to preface some of that. We have to watch for those cues. If there's danger, then we need to, you know." take them out of that very gently but um she was prepared to you know face that trauma and it it was a very gentle regression back gently you know and again they're fully conscious everybody's fully conscious once they're in hypnosis but yeah you have to be very gentle and careful for sure yeah Mm -hmm. and how about during the past lives uh, again my one reference this book is what i have to go on right now but really good book okay um he talked about every i think every life of this girl anyway uh, after after she died he would talk to her or take her back after she died mm-hmm. and there was always a positive um a feeling about we've all heard the bright light he talked about it, or she talked about it, a, a bright warm light people running to her and then then it goes into the next life does that sound like anything that you've had experiences that, that's very similar i mean because once the the soul is again the soul is always evolving and you know whether it's a traumatic or a, a, a something that really bad happened and it ended their life or you know something that was a beautiful transition there is that light and there are those beings around you that you know it's all warm and love and comfort you know it's very comfortable that's, i don't think um, i'd want to come back after that but 
<laughs> they come back, like I said, souls come back voluntarily. Oh, yeah, okay. Cam, there was a... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, w- w- one of you mentioned somebody said that if you were bad, you would come back uh, as a dog. And a bad dog coming back dog. as a fly. Well, there's dogs and there's dogs, you know. There's yeah, the do- that's true. There's the I dog that's tied up in the backyard from oh, day it well. Yeah, that's right. Who knows? Until it dies, and then there's the dog like I had who I would love to come back as that dog. She had a great life. But. Yeah. Speaking of lives, Kim, what, do you, what is your take on um, near-death experiences? Very, very real. I had one myself um, when I was younger, much younger. And, um, you know, they told me, you, you cannot, you can't. It's not your time. You have to go back. And, um, you know, it, it really, that's what really set me towards um, believing how I did. I've always been connected to nature and stuff, but that was extremely powerful. Um, yeah, you get to see and, and be right in that realm, right in that in-between. Um, and if you have a job to do, say, you know, the soul said, okay, I'm I'm, I'm doing this and I'm going to live till I'm 85, but you got into a car accident and you flatlined. The body just kind of quit and your soul starts to elevate and they send you back. Oh, 100%. It's very, very real. And the soul says, okay, but, you know, the soul, if you, if you, let's put it this way, if you pass away, the soul knows that, you know, that was my time. The soul already knows ahead of time. Yeah. You know, back to um, the the Bible and it, some other info I gleaned. It said that the Bible did have at one time references uh, about reincarnation. It did. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, I never knew that. Mm-hmm. And then it's it also said now I've got this people right Con- Constantine and his mother Helena deleted the references. Constantine was of the Roman Empire, and he was the major source of um, deleting a lot of the entries of the Bible, and a lot of that is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Book of Thomas. In fact, there's 49 entries, 49 books of the Bible that have been deleted, and what it did was connect. It made, it, it, it those, those missing pieces of the Bible is what made people um, connected. And it, when they took that out, it basically was to cause separation. That's what Jesus was trying to tell you. You know, I am God is he and he is me. But Constantine at the time understood the realm of fear and separation. So there was bits, bits and pieces taken out to for power. And so, yeah, right. and so then that, that Bible at that point was made um, for people, and that's where the false programming is coming to. Yeah, this. and again, the Bible being stepped on many times. Right. I'm not saying, yeah, there, I'm sure there's some wonderful stuff about it, but yeah. There again. Well, there's the beautiful stuff about it. It's just altered, which kind of really robs the idea of the higher being God source. But. Of course. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about this, Ray? Oh, I think it's very interesting. Yeah. Like uh, That's the way I felt when, uh, when I finished that uh, past life thing that I did when it was all over. I think there was a lot of interesting stuff in it. I, I think I consider myself a little bit more of a realist, so I have... Uh, Maybe I have a, 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 a problem with some of it, but there seems to be a, an awful lot of evidence to, for it. And we're speaking and, evidence. Huh? Your, your former cop, right? And a former. <laughs> you deal with evidence all the time on the material <laughs> type, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a different kind of evidence. Yeah. yeah. And how about the masters, again, with the book, but you talked about, I, I kind of took that as a godlike figure, speaking through uh, his client, if you will. Mm-hmm. As masters, and she wasn't even aware of that of what she was saying. Right? Does that have you ever encountered anything like that? I'm not so much the masters or the ascended masters. And the ascended masters are, you know, Saint Germain and you know Buddha and you know Kuan Yin. Okay. And, uh, but they are around. Um, but who who actually spoke through was some of the guides, and we do call the guides in on something like that. We if, if the client is willing, guides, angels, and whoever their their family members, they'll come right through too. So if you're a clear channel. Once you hit that subconscious mind, it's a clear channel. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I think back to almost like a seance type thing. I know that's a little, here we go, Jerry Springer. Again. But, but yeah, but in relative, yeah, <laughs> in retrospect, yeah. So yeah, Kim, okay. I heard you say that, and that's interesting. I, who has played a big influence on you? I mean, I just heard a little bit of Abraham Hicks in there. Mm-hmm. You know, we're coming back. Uh, who who played on some of the stuff? Who, what was your formative years? Who Who impressed you the most? Uh, Abraham Hicks is one of them. Um, it actually, it's a big one. Um, you know, I, I've dealt with uh, Joe Dispenza. He's yeah. he's huge to me. Yeah. Um, Greg Braden. Yes. I, I just adore Greg Braden. Um, gosh, there's so many of them that, you know, that, that really just had formed me. 
Well, I mean, they're, they're just different aspects. And, and Joe Dispenza healing himself after being into a very traumatic um, accident. Um, he's, he's huge on, on the dimensions. And not only that, but he's a scientist, too. So, oh, yeah. So interesting. Got, yeah, okay. he's got so science. Look up on you. Yeah, and Joe Dispenza. Melding of scientists mm-hmm. with us. Yeah. Where, where well, the psychics you? fit into your scheme here? Well, we all are psychic to a certain degree. To a certain degree, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the ones that, that uh, will predict something that's going to happen in uh, a given period of time. And, and th- I guess a lot of them have a fairly decent record for being accurate. They just, their their radio dials are tuned in a little bit sharper and, you know, than some of us. And, you know, they I'm a big fan of it. I mean, cause again, we're all psychic to a certain extent. And so um, while it plays into my line of work, I deal with psychics all the time. And, um, you know, I have to respect what they see uh, because, uh, you know, they've, they're very gifted. Mm. You know, I just, just remembered something on this past life thing we, we did. Uh, the, the last session, what we did was um, looked at a future life. Mm-hmm. Future, uh, it's called future progression. Yeah. And I... So, it, 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 they, that session was not quite as long, and, and the only thing I really remember about it is that uh, I was in this big room, uh, evidently getting ready to get on an airplane or something, and, and it was uh, had all different things on the wall that I don't recall. But that that was my what I'm looking forward to, I guess. I, uh, so there, that's going to be your next day, days of in your next life. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd gotten some like real advice at that, you know, like <laughs> buy Sony twenty years ago, I'd be rich now. <laughs> so people can reach out to you. So you you're down at Harbor right behind the rice bowl. Right. That behind little the, mall there? Yep, right. Yeah, there. cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long you been there. I've only been there a year. I had a different office that it didn't work out and so trying to find an office that fits all my equipment and everything is kind of been of a challenge. So this little office is cute. It's very quaint, quiet and peaceful and and you have equipment, you said? I do. I've got vibroacoustic equipment that helps, you know, it's known to help uh, EMTs and veterinar- uh, veterans, um, you know, with PTSD. And it's just a beautiful, there's two vibroacoustic medical grade neoprene beds. And they, uh, you lay on them and you have the earphones on and you listen to some, a certain amount of music and it vibrates at a certain frequency based on what you're trying to do, whether it's pain, relaxation, trauma. And you lay on that bed for about 25 minutes and you're completely blissed out. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. That's it's, it's, neat. yeah. It's beautiful. How many people can feel their kidneys? I, when I had kidney cancer, I didn't know. I mean, you don't feel your kidneys inside of you until I got on a vibrational bed and literally for the first time in my life I experienced, whoa, I'm feeling vibrations through my kidneys. Yeah. So bizarre. Yeah. You know, yeah. it feels something like that. It's like we, we just opened a new can of worms here. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to do can that. You? Well, that's is, is that what you thing, use yeah. this vibration thing for? If I, if I just go into to, to your office and say, I want to try that out. That would be something you can do, yeah. I mean, and I have what, to... what would what would be a likely result? Relaxation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Relaxation, because we're all vibration anyway, and so it's a matter of aligning the cells and the right frequency to make but it But is it common to, to have a reaction like Jack did? Uh, yeah, people can feel their organs. Uh-huh. Yeah, it goes all the way through to the cellular yeah. level. Mm-hmm. Even in crystal ba- uh, crystal bowls one time, I yeah. was in between two big crystal bowls laying down, and I felt the inner yeah. body. I've never felt that before. It's, it's frequency. Bizarre. It's all frequency, frequency. and vibration. Yep. It was cool. Yeah. Do, do crystals and stone, my, my wife was very much into the crystals and the rocks. Yes. Do, do they come into some of this at all as far as any kind of ability? I mean, she truly believed rocks were alive. They and are. I can. I can. Get they are. Well, that. your watch, computers, they have crystals in them themselves to right, transmit right. frequency. Okay. So yes, they're okay. all very much alive. Okay. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was always fun going rock hunting with her, but <laughs> I, I love big, my heavy crystals. Rock <laughs> yeah, I've got all kinds. Oh, of them, wonderful. Crystals. Okay. Okay. Good and bad, Mike. I had Chris, uh, kidney crystals. They're called kidney stones. Yes. Oh, <laughs> wasn't too, that wasn't too fun. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You get don't have those, those around. Kind of yeah. hang out with. We them. got rid of those. <laughs> we, we pass those on. Oh God! Wow. Yeah, you just opened one of my big fears. What's that? It reminded me of it. I've talked to people who've had that and uh, kidney stones, and 
It's not. So it's the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Yeah, a friend of mine is a, a physician's assistant, and he he said he walked into the ER, and as soon as they took a look at him, they said, "Kidney stones." <laughs> yeah. It was it, horrible pain. Yeah, the uh, I guess the reaction is pretty typical. Yeah. So you do most of your stuff remote. Ninety nine percent of it's remote. I do have in person clients though. So did that start with a COVID kind of deal? Prior to COVID, but COVID really shifted that into gear yeah. and made it more prevalent. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Rick? Yeah. COVID changed oh. a lot of things. Huh? <laughs> it really you did. Put me on the spot. Now. You were raising your hand. There was. Um, no, no. <laughs> a, <laughs> Tell everybody it was fine. Oh, I, I, oh, I thought you were raising oh, your hand. So, no. A, a while back, there was a, a famous actress whose name I cannot remember. She was more famous for dancing than anything. And, oh, she did a movie and everything. And she was. Uh, She's very into all this uh, past life stuff. and Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine. She was subject to a lot of ridicule, uh, late night comedian jokes oh, and things like that. Did, did you read her book by any chance? I did not, but I was aware she was into past lives and reincarnation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making quite a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, or she went to, oh, somewhere in South America where she was up yeah. in some kind of a thing. I don't know. And, and it was an area that is known for. for uh, I won't call them flying saucers, but oh, you were, okay. yeah, and she saw all these things, and I don't know. But you, you're not familiar well, with her, really, other than hearing. I I know that she was um, very much into reincarnation and past lives, and yeah, you know, kind of got a lot of grief for it. But I also know that she saw some really interesting things too. But yeah. I never had a chance to read her book. Mm -hmm. Kind of brings me to mind of Carlos Castaneda mm -hmm. and take now take in mushrooms and hallucinogens and all that stuff. Um, but wasn't he supposed to be tapped into that kind of a world? No. Yes. Well, or is that just beyond drugs? I don't know. But my wife was also <laughs> along that line. Uh, the vortexes, if you will, yep. in the world. Mount Shasta was. We we used to go to Mount Shasta. I just love that place. It is kind of mystical and magical to it me. It truly is, and it's the first chakra of the planet. Okay, I've heard mm -hmm. that. Now I know they have the little little people in what the middle. What are they? The looms or something like that? Uh, I can't uh, remember. Yeah. But it's always fun and fascinating. But what we did encounter there every once in a while, and I, it's probably a natural occurrence, is um, lenticular clouds forming all the time over that. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful sight, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Mount Shasta is pretty mystical. Yeah, I had some friends who lived in Sedona, and they moved there for just that purpose mm -hmm. because of the vibe. Well, I've been to Sedona time, too, and that's a pretty awesome it's place. Beautiful place. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're running out of time. We're here. running out of time, yes. We well, we have a little over two minutes. I'd like to thank the listeners, by the way, and I forgot to, we did get a text I, I forgot to read, but uh, I'd like to thank my friend Ilona and her grandson for listening in. She texted in. And oh, I, okay. Cool. Yeah. Kim, what are your hours? Um, I Monday through Friday, uh, phone lines are open from 9 to 5. I do accommodate for weekends and evenings, depending on your work schedule. What's your phone number? 541 469 Zero two six two. Cool. Okay, and it, yeah. your website again? www.coastalhypnosisandholistics.com. I'm also on Facebook as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to uh, experience the KCIW bump. The bump, bump, the bump. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Hey, the more people I can help, the better. There we go. It's <laughs> you know? awesome. Yeah. Right on. Thank what you guys for having me. I appreciate well, it. It's been fun and interesting. Yeah, for sure. It has been. What an afterlife. <laughs> and more. So, did you ever have? Uh, oh, we only have a little bit left. Something where it uh, came out that you should have reported to the cops, or uh, it is a HIPAA violation if there's anything like that. Um, nothing yet that was like murder or anything like that. No or yeah. sexual abuse continuum. Um, well, I deal with a lot of sexual abuse clients, but you know, oh. uh, victims or perpetrators. Vic victims, victims. I haven't had a perpetrator yet, and I. Okay. I, don't. I, do, I, no. I know there's a, we that's, had a lot in the, the last That's the fly week. that comes back. <laughs> Where uh, therapists and people like that did need to report that. It went beyond their confidentiality. And right. I don't know if that was just Alaska or it was nationwide or whatever, for social workers and things like that. Well, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, everybody. Oh, Treppy, was fun. Uh, yeah. Great conversation. I'm going to steal your, uh, I'm going to steal your, you I'm going to steal your text and your questions. I think it's a great idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, good idea. Oh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'll have to talk to the yeah, we will to the boys. We'll talk from boss, Trump, but I think Tom, they're, they're Tom Bozak. They'll probably let you go back to you and Linda. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank anyway. you.
Thanks for listening in. You've been listening to Curry Cafe on KCIW in Belkings or 100.7. 100.7. FM on a sunny day. Brookings. <laughs> yeah, sunny. sunny Sunday. Very professionally done club <laughs> <laughs>